My friend Jeff is a photographer. This is Jeff filming me filming him in the alley behind his studio. And that's me filming him filming me. As far as I'm concerned, Jeff's images of pretty boys covered in thick black paint and distressed layers of latex speak for themselves. But a lot of people feel more comfortable about art when they interpret it. For some, these images are a metaphor about physical alienation in the cyber age. For others, the work is a physical representation of the virus that has been such an integral part of gay men's identity for the last 30 years. For still others, it's a profane commentary on the influence of religion in classic Western art. Having known Jeff for years now, I know there's truth in all of these interpretations. But for me, the true essence of his work lies somewhere deeper. That's John. He runs a gallery in Toronto where Jeff had a big show. I attended the opening and people really seemed to get into the work, although John said at least one person called the work pornographic. Actually, it's nice to know that in the age of free amateur hardcore porn on the internet, you can still push a few buttons. Here's Jeff painting one of his models. Everyone always asks him why he started applying paint to the bodies of his subjects in the first place, and he just says that he got tired of taking pictures of people because they were starting to bore him. Watching my friend slather his models with paint as black as tar, I started feeling like a spy at the initiation ritual of an ancient fraternity. And though they spoke of feeling like superheroes once the paint had been applied, there seemed to be something humbling for these handsome young models about covering their chiseled bodies with complete darkness. There was a vulnerability now to their expressions. Have I been erased, they seemed to wonder. I thought of queers everywhere who spent the vast majority of their lives erasing themselves to escape the tight pressures of culture. But now I'm interpreting. Instead, I've got a little story I want to share. Once upon a time, there's a chubby little boy growing up in a tough neighborhood in a big city. The boy's not very good at sports. He'd rather play with his sister's dolls. He also gets beat up on the playground a lot. For some strange reason, the kids who always beat him up are the same ones he thinks about every night before falling asleep. One night, he touches himself while thinking about the bullies. But that only makes him feel worse about himself later. Why is he thinking about touching them, and kissing them, and holding their fists in his hands, when all they do is make his life a living hell? When the boy gets older, he moves to an even bigger city, where he lifts heavy objects to look as strong as the boys who beat him up. At the gym, he meets other nice men who were beat up on other playgrounds. They've all made their bodies bigger and stronger than their school bullies, and they play real nice together. But sometimes the games get boring and the man who was once the chubby kid goes looking for something new. Whenever he even thinks of searching for it, he starts getting a tingling from the back of his neck down through his thighs. Sometimes he looks in a dark bar or a dark park. There are plenty of places to go, actually. It's kind of scary because the boys in these places look like the boys who used to beat him up. But thinking about that also makes the tingling feeling last longer. One night he finds a special club where nice boys get together to play special games dressed in special clothes. 
That's where he meets a boy who teaches him that a fist can be put inside a person too. With the man's fist inside him, he feels fulfilled and complete. He goes back to the special place again and again to take more fists inside him. It's even easier when he takes some of the special medicine he's found to relax him. Deeper and deeper he takes them, till he becomes separated from his body. He's floating above his body now, looking down at himself with the man's fist inside him up to the shoulder. I can do something no one else can do, he says to himself. I can let their fists inside me until I've turned them all into love. This is his holy power. One night when he's in this special sacred space with a fist deep inside him, he starts feeling really cold. And when the fist comes out, he's completely numb. He can't come back into his own body. But by then, all the men with the fists have gone. To see him today, you'd never know what happened. The doctors say he was lucky. The only sad part is that he can no longer use his sacred and magical powers to turn fists into love. But then how many people can even do that once in their life? This film about Jeff and his dark images of guys covered in black paint and the chubby boy from the big city is dedicated to everyone who has ever turned fists into love, whether they did it with their bodies or their cameras or their minds. Some people might call it pornography, but then what do those people know about taking the punches of playground bullies and turning them into something beautiful?